So here are five tips that'll help you get the most out of the upcoming total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024. Hey everyone, my name's Mike Shaw and I'm a night photography teacher and the author of the recent book, The Beginner's Guide to Astrophotography. I'm here with my friends at B&H Photo to share five key insights that'll totally improve your totality experience. Let's get started. So tip number one is all about safety, how to protect yourself and your camera while you're photographing the sun. First, it's never safe to look at the sun directly without a certified solar filter, either on a typical day or during a solar eclipse. Without a solar filter, you risk permanently damaging your vision and your cameras. And when I say permanently, I mean for the rest of your life. Look for an ISO certification like this one when you're purchasing your solar filters for yourself. The only time it's safe to remove the solar filter and view the eclipse directly is during the few minutes of totality. During totality, you're safely in the moon's shadow and the moon completely blocks the sun. Now is the time to revel in the extraordinary spectacle of totality, with more on that in tip number two. And even so, you have to be prepared to reattach your solar filters the moment totality ends and the dazzling sun reappears from behind the moon. And in case you're wondering, a 10-stop neutral density filter won't work. Not only is it not dark enough, it also allows the harmful ultraviolet and infrared light from the sun to pass through. White light solar filters can be attached to your lenses in a few different ways. First, you can buy filters that screw directly into the lens like this one. Alternatively, filters can slip over the outside of the lens like this one. If you decide to purchase a solar filter that screws directly into the lens, be sure to get the biggest one available. You can then use step-down filterings like these to adapt the filter to smaller lenses. So with a reliable solar filter in hand, you're ready to safely experience and photograph the total solar eclipse. Tip number two is all about the path of totality. What is it and why you have to be inside of it? 99.99% is not good enough. Now totality is the signature event of a total solar eclipse. Now the main actors during an eclipse are of course the sun and the moon. During a total solar eclipse, through one of nature's most remarkable cosmic coincidences, the sun's apparent size exactly matches the apparent size of the moon as viewed from Earth. Consequently, when the moon moves between the Earth and the sun, it perfectly blocks the sun's disk, and the shadow that the moon casts onto the Earth allows us to view the sun's magnificent corona in all its glory. Now, you have to be inside the relatively narrow path of totality to experience these effects, and at most, this path is only about 150 miles wide. Outside of the path of totality, you will not. Instead, you'll only experience a partial eclipse the entire time and completely miss all the events that occur during totality. A 99.99% partial eclipse ain't good enough. You have to get all the way inside the path of totality. As the saying goes, the difference between a 99 and 100% solar eclipse is a whole lot more than just 1%. Now, the closer you get to the center of the path of totality, the longer the eclipse lasts. But even along the center line, totality only lasts a few minutes. Near the path's edges, totality only lasts a few seconds. You can look up all the details of totality for your location at the timeanddate.com website and remember to have your red headlamp and warm jacket ready because it's going to get dark and cold. So when you make your eclipse plans, I urge you to find a location within the path of totality and as close to its center as you can. There you'll enjoy the full total eclipse experience. Our tip number three talks about the different types of solar eclipse images you might like to capture. Wide angle, telephoto, single image, and composites or blends. There are many different types of solar eclipse image projects that you can pursue. The simplest, of course, are cell phone shots and videos. You can use a cell phone to capture many aspects of an eclipse, both during partial phases and during totality. As always, just be sure to never aim your cell phone directly towards the sun in case you look at the sun directly yourself by mistake. With a DSLR or mirrorless camera and certified solar filters, there are two main types of shots you can consider based on the focal length of the lens you choose to shoot with. The first and most straightforward are wide-angle shots that include both the eclipsed sun along with the foreground. The second are images that zoom in on just the eclipsing sun and moon themselves. Now for wide-angle shots, you'll probably want to use a lens with a focal length of around 16 millimeters or lower to be able to capture both the eclipsed sun along with the foreground. This is because the eclipse will be positioned quite high in the sky since it will occur either in the early to mid-afternoon in most of the U.S. 
With a wide angle lens during the brief moments of totality when it's safe to remove the solar filter, I'd recommend an aperture priority exposure mode with a minus 1.7 EV exposure compensation as a good starting point. You may also wish to bracket your exposures to cover your bases. On the other hand, if you use a telephoto lens, you can capture close-ups of the eclipse that will reveal the sun's corona, prominences, Bailey's beads, and the beautiful diamond ring effect. If you do choose to use a telephoto lens, say in the 200mm longer range, you'll find a star tracker to be a big help in keeping the eclipse centered in the middle of your frame without the constant need for readjustment. During totality with your solar filter removed, I'd recommend bracketing your shutter speed between around 1 8 thousandths of a second all the way to roughly half a second. I'd recommend an ISO of between 100 to 400 and an aperture of between f5.6 to f11 to capture the full range of solar phenomena. You also have many exciting multi-image project possibilities you can try. With a wide-angle lens, you can consider shooting and creating an eclipse sequence that includes both the partial phases and totality as shown here. With a telephoto lens, one possibility is a high dynamic range approach to blending the images you captured with different shutter speeds during totality. Another are composite arrangements of the different stages of totality, or composite showing totality along with various of the partial phases. No matter what image projects you choose to pursue, I'm sure you're going to have an incredible and rewarding eclipse experience. Our fourth tip is all about practicing at home, so you know exactly what settings to use on eclipse day, how to set everything up, and exactly when to start shooting. One of the best ways to prepare is to practice setting up all your gear at home whenever the skies are clear and photographing just the sun from start to finish. The only thing that you won't do during your practice sessions, of course, is to remove your solar filter. An excellent place to start is with a wide-angle lens like this 24mm example. Here are two shots without a solar filter on the left and then with the solar filter on the right. You can really see the difference with the solar filter on. The only thing that shows up is the sun. Everything else is entirely black. And this is normal and exactly what you want to create your wide-angle eclipse sequence composites. As you're doing these test shots, you should explore different combinations of ISO, aperture, and shutter speed as you can see in this example. For the partial phases of the solar eclipse, when your solar filter is in place, the typical range of ISOs is between 100 and 400. Apertures are between f4 and f11, and shutter speeds are between 1 50th and 4 thousandths of a second. In this example, I adjusted the shutter speed between 1 400th and 1 6400th of a second, the f-stop between f5.6 and f11, and the ISO between 400 and 200. I then reviewed all the different shots in Adobe Lightroom and narrowed my choices down to these three. I then examined these sunspot groups at high magnification in Lightroom and Photoshop and finally settled on this combination just here, ISO 400, F8, and 1 3200th of a second. These are the settings that I used during the annular eclipse of October 2023 and they work just great. Knowing my exposure settings ahead of time was an enormous relief. Now, once you've established your settings, the next step is to do a complete eclipse dress rehearsal from start to finish, like here for the annular solar eclipse in October 2023. Any time you can spend outdoors with your camera, practicing, photographing the sun, and then studying the results will pay enormous dividends in ironing out the wrinkles. I promise. And our fifth and final tip is simply to enjoy the eclipse. A total solar eclipse is one of nature's finest spectacles, something you'll remember for the rest of your life. Eclipse day is here. You've set everything up and it's all running smoothly. You wait for the moon shadow to arrive as it races towards you at over a thousand miles an hour. Before you know it, totality is imminent. The air gets noticeably cooler as the sunlight becomes pale and silvery. The wind picks up. It's getting darker and darker. There's a strong feeling that something is about to happen. And all of a sudden, there it is. A hole in the sky, surrounded by the dazzling corona unlike anything you could ever imagine. You look around, astonished at how your environments change. Birds and animals are rustling around. People are shouting, pointing at the sky. It's darker than you would have ever have thought possible. And then suddenly it's over. The sky brightens back up and you're already thinking about the next one. So to wrap things up, here are a few resources to help you get ready for the eclipse, starting with this excellent website from NASA. It includes a map of the path of totality along with the times of maximum eclipse. Another terrific resource is the greateamericaneclipse.com website. It has tons of information that you'll find helpful, along with the timeanddate.com website from tip 3. And of course, my own website, mikeshawphotography.com, has additional resources, classes, and workshops to help you prepare. So once all the preparations are done and Eclipse Day arrives, be sure to set some time aside to simply put everything down, look up at the sky, and fully appreciate the awe of being inside the moon's shadow. Well, okay, I think that's going to wrap things up for these tips. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day on Eclipse Day. Please let me know in the comments below how your experience goes. 
You can visit BH Photo for much of the equipment that we talked about today. You can also visit my website, mikeshawphotography.com, to learn more about upcoming classes, webinars, presentations, and Eclipse resources. Once more, thanks again for watching.